In this presentation, we are going to be reviewing an original research paper based on intensive blood glucose control in acute and prolonged critical illness. The reference for this journal can be found on slide one. Uh, the aim of the presentation is to review a paper that claimed that indigenous secretion contributes more to plasma insulin than exogenous in insulin infusion. Uh, they did this by investigating the contribution of impaired insulin secretion observed as dynamics of C-peptide. Um, a C-peptide uh, test measures the levels of C-peptide in the plasma, which are generally found in equal amounts to insulin, because once insulin is secreted from the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas by the beta cells, it contains the C-peptide in a form of insulin referred to as pro-insulin, before further processing the precursor, forms the final version of insulin. Aids in diagnosis of type 1 and type 2 diabetes in relation to insulin blood plasma levels and low plasma count would indicate type 1 diabetes, whilst a standard insulin count would indicate type 2 diabetes. Another way they, in, uh, they, inter they investigate the contribution of impaired insulin secretion was through insulin resistance measured by usoglycemic clamps, uh, which measures the levels of insulin resistance. The clamp technique requires administration of a variable intravenous glucose infusion in one arm, which enables you to clamp the serum glucose levels at normal fasting concentration. The degree of insulin resistance should be inversely proportional to the glucose uptake in tissues. Insulin is a peptide hormone produced by the beta cells in the isolates of Langerhans in the pancreas. The primary translational product of the INS gene is not insulin, but in fact a precursor referred to as pre-proinsulin. Post-translational modifications of pre-proinsulin produce the final bioactive version of insulin which circulates in the plasma. These post-translational modifications firstly include removal of the signal peptide from pre-proinsulin. The signal peptide is 23 amino acids long and is removed from the end terminus. This produces proinsulin. Removal of the 33 amino acid long connecting peptide produces the final bioactive version of insulin. The biologically active form of insulin consists of 51 amino acids, an alpha chain with 21 amino acids and a beta chain with 30 amino acids. The alpha and beta chains are linked by two disulfide bridges at 16 residues. The alpha chain also contains an interchain disulfide bridge. Insulin is associated with the correction of many metabolic abnormalities in the body, the main one being the prevention of hyperglycemia, which is high plasma glucose concentration. This is characterized by a plasma glucose concentration greater than 11.1 millimolars per liter. A C-peptide test is an example of an electrochemiluminescence immune assay. The instrument used is a Rocher Cobas, which is a biochemical immunity analyzer. The C-peptide assay is a two-site immunometric sandwich assay using electrochemiluminescence detection. This consists of the patient specimen, biotinylated monoclonal C-peptide specific antibodies, and monoclonal C-peptide specific antibodies labeled with erythinium react to form a complex. These monoclonal antibodies are derived from a mouse. Streptovidin coated microparticles act as a solid phase to which the complex becomes bound. Voltage is applied to the electrode inducing a chemilucent emission from the erythinium which is then measured against the calibration curve to determine the amount of C-peptide in the patient specimen. The experiment was conducted on multiple trauma patients, which were expected to require ventilation support for at least two weeks, mainly due to head, he, severe head injury or chest trauma. The patients did not have diabetes and were not expected to die. The subjects were fed and supplemented with parental nutrition to reach the nutritional goal of 1.5 grams of amino acids per kilogram per day and 80% of energy expenditure. The proportion of calories increased from 30% at the beginning of the study to 60% in the end. The graph shows the average levels of plasma insulin, infused insulin, plasma C-peptide concentrations in all the patients 4 days after the injury until 17 days after the injury. The <coughs> measurements were obtained by measuring blood glucose levels in at least 3 hour intervals and corrected with IV insulin according to a nurse directed protocol. 
plasma insulin and CPEP blood concentrations were assessed daily at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. every day until day 17. At days 4, 10 and 17, nutrition was interrupted at 2 a.m. and between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Side notes derived from the experiment include that all patients required exogenous insulin to achieve glycemic control. Insulin concentrations declined through the study because of a decrease in both insulin secretion and exogenous insulin dose. They use a multiple regression model to assess what extent the plasma insulin concentration was dependent on exogenous infusion. In this model, the dependent variable was plasma insulin and the independent variables was the exogenous insulin dose and plasma C peptide. They observed beta coefficients and their significance to both dependent values. Assuming zero plasma insulin in the absence of exogenous infusion and endogenous secretion, they set the intercept to zero in the multiple regression model. The results demonstrated that insulin sensitivity improves between the zero and 14 days after multiple trauma and then remains stable after the 14 days. Even with high doses of exogenous insulin that are necessary to control blood glucose level, endogenous insulin secretion remains the main source of plasma insulin during both acute and protracted critical illness. After taking all the factors into consideration, we can conclude that during both in acute and protracted phases of critical illness, plasma insulin is determined more by endogenous secretion than by the infusion of exogenous insulin. Exogenous insulin is used to control blood glucose during artificial nutrition.